Hi everyone, this is Lisa giving you greetings from Baltimore. Hope you all are having a blessed day and an awesome day and praising God. Throughout your day, asking God to strengthen you and guide you throughout your everyday trials. Being accounted for. Everyone, I um, just want to welcome you all. And I just want to talk today a little bit about Timothy, first Timothy in the Bible, who Timothy is and what he's doing in the church. So everyone, let's just bless this, um, this video in Jesus' mighty name, Yeshua HaMashiach. We thank you, Father God. We bless your holy name. Lord, you're awesome. You're worthy. We reverence you, Lord. We welcome you in this place, Father. Lord Jesus, let your words speak fluently through me. Let your anointing fall around me in this place, holy God. Touch each and every listener, the sender and the receiver. Block every unclean thing. Send it to a, a dry place. Banish it forever. Return to zero. No black backsplash, Father. Lord Jesus, um, let it die by your fire. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The who shall be will, believe on him, shall have light, eternal life. Lord Jesus, we thank you. If God be for us, who shall be against us? In Jesus' name. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rise against us in judgment, the Lord thy God shall condemn. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God. You are to be reverenced. You are to be praised. We lift you up this day. Lord, you are worthy. You are omnipotent and omnipresent. Nothing by any means shall hurt us or come up near our tent or our dwelling in Jesus' mighty name. We praise you with the Psalms 91. Over our life, he that dwelleth in a secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and on this wing shalt thou trust. Lord Jesus, we just thank you, and we trust you, we praise you, we walk in obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. We lift our hands in glory to you, El Shaddai. Everyone, hello, hello, hello. Yes, let's talk a little bit about Timothy. This will be in 1 Timothy. Now, Timothy was Paul's prodigy, his child in faith. This is on over, uh, OverviewBible.com. So a little bit about Timothy. Paul had left Timothy in the city of Ephesus to steer certain men away from false doctrine and provide sound leadership. This is Paul's follow-up letter. 1 Timothy is about sound doctrine and godliness. Paul deals with two main issues in the epistle. Well, Christians should or should not teach. False teachers had already cropped up in the early church, and Timothy was sure to deal with more of them. Paul encourages Timothy to maintain sound teaching regarding the law and the gospels, gifts from God and the scriptures. Timothy is also charged to teach in his church to behave in a godly way which means he spends even more time discussing what godliness looks like in the church. From family to finances, from prayer to church leadership, Paul walks through several facets of life and discusses how to go about them in godly ways. The Greek word most commonly translated godliness or piety in the New Testament appears eight times in the first Timothy. It doesn't show up this much in any other book of the Bible. Okay, everyone, that's just a little bit about who Timothy is. He's a young minister. He's a protege of Paul. Learning about um, godliness and how to act in the church and how to conduct yourselves and what he would come up against. Some ungodly things in, um, as Paul had preached previously. So let's start, everyone. First Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace. 
from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some of that they teach. Excuse me, everyone. <laughs> My phone is having a hard time declining. <laughs> Excuse me, everyone, again. And to Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister to questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfined, from which some having answered have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. So there you said that they was um, idle talk and it's false, it's, it's jangling and rambling, that people were teaching false things that they could not confirm and understand. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. So we said that there were laws to keep people straight from doing wrongdoings. For who among us, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for purged persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, such as kidnappers, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who have enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy. Okay, so Timothy was a person that was uh, obtained mercy, um, who was a blasphemer, but he obtained mercy and he was put into ministry. Who was before blasphemer and a prosecutor and and, and, and Injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So he's saying that he was doing some things because he didn't know. So um, now that he can see how he's supposed to do things, now um, he was um, forgiven through grace. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus, such as in Romans 5.20. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Okay, he's saying that he was the chief of sinners. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy. Saying again that he was a sinner saved through mercy. Jesus uh, had grace and mercy on him. That in me, first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them that which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. So you believe on Jesus, you have everlasting life. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Okay. Holding faith and a good conscience. Jesus talked about that conscience. Having a good conscience. Which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. They rejected and suffered from having bad conscience. They were doing things against the Lord. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. 
See, Jesus is saying you're not to uh, learn to blaspheme. He'll deliver you to Satan if you are. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and givings of thanks be made for all men. So he said with, with prayer and supplication, intercessions, give thanks. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So Jesus, so so he's saying that Jesus wants us to lead a peaceable life in godliness and being honest and not dishonest. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. See, this is how we are to behave within the church of God, the believers. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth, what they desire to. For there is one God and one mediator be between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. See, Jesus is the Son of God. One God and one, one, one God. Jesus and, and, and God are one. Who gave himself a ransom for us. You know, God is the ransom to us, our sins. To be testified in due time. Whereto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak in truth in Christ and lie not. So Timothy is saying that he's speaking in truth and not lying. As to how we are to act. A teacher of the Gentiles of faith and, and verity. He, he's talking to the um, Gentiles. I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. So he's saying that we are to pray, such as in Luke 23, 34. Lifting up our holy hands when prayer and not doubting our prayers, that our prayers will be answered. And like men also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shame, facedness, and sobriety, not with boarded hair or gold or pearls or costly array, proper proprietary. So he's saying that when women um, who are in, in the church, the beliefs of Christ, he said, don't don't be so bogged down with um, worshiping your looks. He's saying it's good to look OK, nice and, you know, your pearls and your gold and your hair. He said, but don't get so into that that you you worshiping it. But. Which becometh woman professing godliness with good works. So it's like offering good deeds, not just looking good, but acting well. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed, uh, then. Eve. So he he's just saying that Jesus says that um, the man is have authority, and you have to realize that woman was formed from the rib of Adam, so she was to be Adam's helper. But we are not to um, overtake what the man is to be. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. Okay, woman, car, and children. If they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety, with love. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire for good work. He's the overseer. If a man is a bishop, he's the overseer of that office. A bishop then must be blameless. Okay, the husband of good wife, vigilant soul of good behavior, given to hospitality after teach, temperate and able. He, uh, you'll become a bishop in the church. You are to be of good behavior. You're to treat your wife well. You're to have one wife. You're to be sober, have great behavior and be vigilant and mindful. Not given to wine nor striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetousness. You're not to be an addicted, um, not violent or, 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 or 
um, money um, hungry. What, what he's saying is, it's a certain dignified way to carry yourself in these type of offices. One that rule of well, his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity, reverence. You know, have that reverence. You are to have yourself in order as well as your household. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good rapport of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. So Jesus is saying if you're in these offices, you're, you're, you're like a deacon or bishop. He's saying that if the people that's less fortunate, you ought to have a, a, a good rapport with them and not to look down on them, but to help them. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double tongue, not given too much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. So Jesus keeps saying not to be drunk of wine because, you know, you, you, you come up against temptation with the devil when you, when you fill it with wine in your spirit. Jesus said, be sober minded to help you fight the wiles of the devil. You in this office, it's this dignity. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. You know, he wants to have a clear and pure conscience, not a bad conscience, not an unclean conscience. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless, serve as. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things, and reverence. So Jesus saying that the, your wives and this, this, um, the wives of these people that's in office, the bishops and the deacons say that the wives not to be slanders, they're to be faithful in all things, they're to be sober minded. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, that one wife ruling their children and their own houses as well. So they have to have things in order, the house in order. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith, which is in Christ Jesus, good standing. These things write unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and, and ground of the truth, conduct and foundation. Now he's saying that in the church we are to behave with good conduct. We are to be, you know, acting a fool in church and doing all these things that we aren't to be doing. We carry ourselves with dignity. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Justify in the spirit, seen of angels. This is who God, he was seen and manified in, in spirit. Justified in flesh. Preach unto the Gentiles, believed on, and the world received up to glory. It's just as in Acts 10.34. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. So God say that people will depart. From, from their faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So he's saying that they will give um, into false doctrine, false beliefs, false preachings and speakings, and not the things of God, the evil. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So that's what Jesus is saying. He said people will be turning from the faith, not listening to him, but listening to evil things of, of Satan. Forbidden to marry and commanded to abstain from meats, which God have created to be, be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Foods. See, see a lot of people abstain from certain foods. And Jesus says that. We are to have these meats, but you are to pray over your food. Jesus say, um, this, this is like pretty much like with Thanksgiving, like it, it, for Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving holiday, you pray before you eat. 
You are to pray over your food for the nourishment. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. See, we have so many false beliefs that certain people believe you shouldn't eat this and you shouldn't eat that. But Jesus is saying you can eat food, just pray over your food. If thou put the brethren in the remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister. Minister, excuse me, Jesus Christ nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained, carefully followed. But refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise ourselves rather unto godliness. So people give in to fables and wives' tales and un things that aren't true. False doctrines. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is in the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. I have this scripture on my wall. I have be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. First Timothy. This is very, very important. It's how we conduct ourselves. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, to the teaching. So Jesus said, until he comes back, you know, we ought to be working for him. Due diligence, we ought to be teaching the truth for him. Until he return, occupying to his return with our teachings, true and sound doctrine, not false doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that the profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this, Thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, you exalt or exhort them, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. So Jesus is saying we are to respect the mothers of the church, the elders of the church, honor widows that are widowed, indeed, honor the widows. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to, sh to show piety at home and to requite their parents for their, that is good and acceptable before God, like their grandchildren. He said, if they do that at home, it's acceptable in the Lord's sight. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate, trusteth in God and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. So continue to pray. Night and day with prayer and supplication, give thanks. And these things given charge that they may be blameless. The commands. But if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he have denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So Jesus is saying, anyone provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he have denied the faith. So he said you have to take care of your own, take care of yourself, take care of your own house, and not neglect these things. You know, first things first is decent order, doing things in order. Let not a widow be taken into the number unto three, under three, uh, three score years old, having been the wife of one man. Okay, it's widows. Um, not a widow to be taken in the number under three score years old, having been the wife under one man. Jesus says one man. 
Well reported uh, for good works, if she have brought up children, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. The rules for the widow. But the younger widows refuse, for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry, refuse to enroll or grow. Having damnation because they have cast off their first faith, and whither they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also as busybodies, speaking things which they ought not, besides and gossips. So Jesus said, we, we um, people in the church, women in church, they're not to be like busybodies and gossipers. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully, to manage. So Jesus is saying for the women to marry and manage the household. But some are already turned aside after Satan. So he's saying that some people have already gone towards the side of Satan and fallen away. If any man or woman that believeth have widows, let them relieve them, and let not the church be charged, that it may relieve that that are widows indeed, to be burdened down. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double hour, honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine, for the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his rewards. Jesus said that you're, you're, you're rewarded for, for your, 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 your um, goodness and, and the, the good things. He said you get your rewards being obedient to him because obedience is better than sacrifice. He said when you in these offices and you're in um, the, the body of Christ, the church, is the body of Christ, the church is uh, the believers in Christ, that's his church. He said we are to conduct ourselves, whether you're a woman or a man, whether you're in office, we, we are to, to conduct ourselves in a certain manner. We're not to be of, of, of drunkenness and acting fools, we're to be violent against each other, one another, and you must take care of your home and your families and um, treat each other um, in goodness and, and peace, be peacemakers in the church. He's saying that these are, are, are the rules, be dignified and call yourself in a dignified way. You know, it, we're not to be out there uh, um, acting like we, we're, we're, we're um, teaching the church as a, as a den of thieves or Teaching the church as a circus, um, buffoonery. Um, that's not what the church is. It's the body of Christ. You know, it's, it's believing in, in the Lord, believing in his word, meditating on his word, and exemplifying the word in, in, in the offices and the life of God. And carry yourself in a godly manner and, and repenting. And, and, and with prayer and supplication, giving thanks. But he says we're not to be out there being rabble rousers and doing evil and falling away from the faith. Because he's saying that there are people that have, have been doing this. And, uh, you know, and he said we ought to, to come to him, to serve him with all our might, all our mind and all our heart. You know, serve Jesus with everything. And we are to, to be patient in the Lord, you know, long suffering, you know. You know, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall walk and not faint, you know. So just wait on them and just be a uh, good cheer, good spirit. When we in church, when, you, when you're in the body of Christ, encourage yourself with dignity and, and be diligent. And peaceful, and um, these are the things that, that, that God say will, will help us with our walk of faith. So, everyone, this is Lisa from Baltimore. Let's praise God for all things, and may God bless you all in churches and in believers in Christ, and to do the things that Christ says to do in His Word. Read First Timothy, everyone, and um, let's just praise God and give God thanks and prayer supplication. We give you thanks, Almighty God. 
Lord, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Everyone, let's go with the peace of God on your lives and have a blessed day. Amen. Bye-bye, y'all.